My name is Bruce Stout and I'm the manager of Murray International Investment Trust and we'll just go through a bit about what the trust is, um, how it's positioned, what the aim of the trust is. It's been around for a long time, since 1907. Um, and if we've time, just a little bit about the outlook of, of what we see going forward from here. So the investment mandate of the trust is to achieve above average dividend yield with long-term growth in dividends and capital. And at this point, I would just like to say um, it's a very fle flexible, truly international mandate. So there isn't really an index that accurately reflects what Money International does um, because it's very diversified. We can invest in bonds, we can invest in, in equities, and it's got that, that higher yield uh, initiative. So um, what we manage is the outcome, which is here, the investment objective rather than trying to be uh, manage it relative to some sort of benchmark index. Um, so that's worth keeping in mind. Now, the next slide that I'm about to click on to is a well-known fact that um, people who are looking at presentations like to see charts and they like to see um, graphs. And what they don't like to see is a page full of numbers. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but this is this is very important, this page. And it's a table for you to keep, if you like. And the key parts of it, I think, um, when you look at it, is the total not net asset value return of the trust over, over the long term term, the 20 years here, and of course we will have some years that are down, but the general trend is up. And the year-to-date performance actually now is on a net asset value is the trust is, is slightly up. The other thing though that's very important is the real income growth. So you have the dividend growth of the trust and we have the retail price index. So you can see that you know over the majority of time um, we have delivered real income growth apart from that, that difficult period in the early 2000s. And the dividend cover, and this is a trust that seeks to cover the income it pays out from the income that it accrues on investments, which is, again, very important to us um, that, that we can manage to pay out what we earn. At the moment, it's a 1.7 billion uh, investment trust, and the yield today is, is 4.5. 7%. Um, the next slide just shows you the um, geographical diversification and it is very diversified. Um, we look uh, to build it from the bottom up um, looking at companies and this is the, the, the um, geographical split that comes out from those companies. We're not um, too focused on where they're domiciled, it's the business that's important but what it is important is that we do have a um, good geographical diversification and that's very very unlike indices as you will know uh, most indices certainly global indices will have about 60 percent in north america now and the other thing that we, we seek to do is to have uh, different businesses i mean ideally we're looking for different companies doing different things in different uh, regions of the world, but it's concentrated and it's high conviction. So, th so there are only around about 50 stocks in the portfolio. And um, hopefully, when you when you do have a look at the the trust in a bit more depth, you'll see that the top 10 stocks in the portfolio are probably um, companies that you don't necessarily see elsewhere. We have um, Taiwan Semi is the largest holder holding in Taiwan, but things like Asur, which is a Mexican airport operator, uh, Roche, Sokimich, which produces lithium in Chile, um, CME Group, which is the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, etc. And, and all these businesses are, have got higher than average yields, very strong balance sheets, high quality, uh, and the key thing is good dividend growth, because that is, is very important to the trust. Now, the next slide, just goes a bit deeper in terms of 
of country exposure. The, the one before was more regional. Um, but, but here you can see that there are 30 countries uh, at, at present in the trust. But sometimes that's only one stock. So something like Korea at 2.5% there, that is only uh, Samsung Electronics. Um, and, and Netherlands at 1.7 is only Unilever. So it gives you an idea. But also the issue of bonds, we're actively use bonds from time to time. Um, because the trust is gearing, is geared. Most investment trusts can have some borrowings. Uh, Money International is no different. So we have uh, 200 million borrowings uh, on sort of four to five year debt on the, of the 1.7 billion gross assets. And from time to time, you get great opportunities in bonds. Five years ago was a terrific opportunity in emerging market debt uh, when the currencies had sold off and bonds had sold off. Um, and therefore, we had uh, built that position up to about 18% at that time. Laterally, we've started to reduce bonds again uh, because they've become more expensive. They've done very well. And quite frankly, there are some um, really good opportunities in equity. So there certainly has been uh, this year. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this page because I think Tom's mentioned it, actually, um, that this has been a very humbling year. And we've all learned a lot, I think, um, because I don't know anybody who was prepared to manage money um, in a pandemic. I certainly haven't managed in a pandemic. Uh, one of the most interesting things, I guess, was th the decimation of dividends, which w was really uh, unprecedented because normally when you get problems with dividends and equities, it's in one industry or one sector. So something like 2008, uh, all the banks cancelled the dividends. We've had property companies cancelling dividends in the past uh, during dividend recessions. Um, we've had insurance companies as well, but this time it was across the board and um, businesses that previously had been strong cash flow generative, a good dividend payers, suddenly all the revenues evaporated because everyone uh, was in social isolation. And as Tom mentioned, the UK market was particularly badly hit um, just because of this sort of structure of the market with commodities and oil companies. And, uh, and also quite a lot of, of um, consumer type based businesses. Um, but from a money international point of view, our, our income stream is very diversified because as you've seen previously, our assets are all around the world in different companies. Um, so it, it was far less exposed to dividend cuts than the, than the pure UK uh, based funds. Um, the key issue here, I guess, is, is when, when dividends are, are reintroduced in the UK or re-established in the UK, uh, what is the level of the, the rebase of dividends? And that's a difficult thing to predict. It's not something that uh, we have to bother about that much at Money International because we've got very, very few UK companies. But remember, as, the, as Tom mentioned too, the gilt yield is 20 basis points today. So, so why would a company re-establish its dividend at three or four percent like the past when the yield, gilt yields are so low? And it remains to be seen what happens there, but I suspect that that it will be problematic for income for some considerable time um, in certain markets around the world. Um, just something that we, we, we must mention, this is the next two slides actually briefly, is that the earnings per share is, is the revenue we get from companies in Murray International. And of course, that can vary on a year to year basis, depending on currencies, <laughs> depending on uh, what's happening. But the key um, differentiating fact, if you like, from, from an investment trust point of view is, is that we have revenue reserves. And Murray International going into this year had 75 million of revenue reserves. Um, which equates to about 58 pence a share. So you can see almost a, more than a full year of last year's dividend um, was in reserve for a rainy day. Uh, we've had a rainy day this year um, and, and we'll have to dip into revenue reserves uh, to cover the dividend, which will be, um, the board have already said, um, the same as last year this year. 
But we've had periods like that in the past, and, and that's why the table on page three is there. You can go and have a look at it before uh, you dip into revenue reserves to smooth it. And then on the good years, when they come round again, you build that reserve up again. And, and where, you, where you really notice this, if you compare and contrast investment trusts with open-ended uh, OICs, because OICs pay out what they earn on a quarterly basis, uh, and even the global OICs, uh, some of their dividends have been really hit hard this year because uh, there are no revenue reserves to smooth it. And there's the dividend cover over the long term and with a net addition to revenue reserves over the last 15 years of over, over £30 million. Pounds. So that's a bit about um, the structure that uh, we wanted to point out. So um, it's very much focused on real income growth, Money International. It's fully diversified, um, and therefore it's not um, got heavy exposure in one sector or one country where benchmarks tend to congregate around. So it's very, very different from a benchmark. But then it's managed towards an outcome, not towards relative performance. And that outcome is to try and deliver um, steady rising real income for uh, shareholders over the long term. And of course, capital growth as well, uh, that you'll see again um, on the table on page three. Now, in the time that I've got left, I just wanted to mention a little bit about the outcome because it's very important um, on, on this slide, um, you see the concentration risk which has happened uh, for the last couple of years, which has really been exaggerated this year, um, into fewer and fewer companies, um, partly to do with um, uh, in index closeting type funds, just by the same names. Um, but when you get this sort of concentration in one market, and this is the S&P 500 in the US, it's extremely dangerous. We saw it before in 2000. Um, and um, it becomes very painful for active managers who don't own those companies on a relative basis uh, because they feel they have to and, and they underperform. Money International doesn't own any of these five companies that make up 25% in the S&P 500 uh, today because they don't pay dividends. And, and they're good companies and they're interesting, uh, but we look elsewhere for our investments. The next chart you can see is uh, it, it goes hand in hand with the low interest rate environment. We've had the so-called deflationary trade, uh, which has inflated multiples uh, and driven all these fewer and fewer tech companies to higher and higher valuations. But the key thing here, which is which is more interesting for us, is the chart on page 13. Uh, we've had 40 years of bull market in bonds where yields have collapsed to virtually nothing in the developed world. Um, and during this period of time, it's been more and more difficult for people to get income. But as we've diversified into Asia, particularly in emerging markets, we see dividend growth much higher there than elsewhere in the world. And we also see dividend yields on equities much higher. And the question is often asked, you know, how can that be the case? And it's because the, the, the bond yields in, in these countries, in India or Indonesia or whatever, are still five or six percent. So an equity yield of four doesn't look out of kilter with the bond yields. And that's an important uh, differentiation between a, a real global type approach to earning income and a, type, a, a simple UK or, or developed world regional type uh, approach to income. And there's a couple other things that I would just like to say here. The past year has put enormous strain on uh, fiscal financing around the world, huge strain, um, to the point where debt to GDP in, in most countries is off the scale. And this is a nobody's fault recession we're in this time. And therefore, who is going to pay for it? Uh, it, it can't. It certainly can't be austerity. So it will have to be either the corporate taxpayer or us as taxpayers, or perhaps inflation. And if it is inflation, then bonds could be a very risky place to be because they've been so strong for so long, 
Um, what is clear, though, is that the cost of getting through the past year has not been so severe in places like Asia, where they have um, not had to spend so much money. They've had much quicker in and out of the pandemic, and the growth outlook still looks much, much better. Now, just on the last couple of slides, we show, I showed a slide earlier about the, the performance of e-commerce and the concentration risk. What, whilst that's interesting, it is of no real relevance to Murray International. What is far more interesting to Murray International is, is this slide, because as the world has obsessed this year on the, the new normal of, of working from home in isolation and e-commerce, it has basically discarded uh, so many other parts of the market. In, in, in this one, in the page in front of you, we've got uh, commodities, but you can extend that to tourism, to travel, to industrials, to any types of cyclical, really, and of course to Asia and emerging markets, where they're not so much cyclical, they're growth companies, but they're selling as if they were cyclical. So whilst this year has been extremely tough, um, it has also provided an incredible opportunities for us to take uh, quite a bit of our bond money, um, which had performed well and had lower yields, and to sell it and reinvest it in equities during this year. Some really high quality businesses with high dividend yields because the stocks had sold off, not because they were high yielding companies, uh, but where we see really good dividend growth uh, going forward from here. So for a large percentage of people in the world, um, the old normal is not some sort of life choice. It, it's just simple reality. Um, so we expect that where the market has been extremely punitive on certain types of businesses uh, and, and, and industries, then that's probably where some of the the greatest positive surprises will be, and certainly some of the best valuations have been um, over the last 12 months and into the future. Now, I'm just going to skip through the next couple of slides on the interest of time and just uh, finish on these two. This is slide 17, and then I'll just finish on 18. What is even more of interest here on slide 17 is that 20 years ago, Money International um, had 45% of the portfolio in the UK. And because it pretty much had to, as a high yield trust, the UK had a monopoly on, on higher yielding income type equity investment. And there was no uh, yield in Asia, there were no dividends in Japan, Europe was, was pretty patchy and America had no dividends either. But in the last 20 years, we've seen an enormous change in the uh, growth and paying of dividends from companies in Asia and around the world. And the key in this chart on page 17 is the emerging market balance sheets of companies are extremely under leveraged relative to those in the developed world, which means they have the funds and the firepower to not only invest and grow for the future, but also to uh, continue to increase the dividends that we get from them. And, and that's very encouraging, especially when other parts of the world uh, will probably really struggle with um, re-establishing dividends, the debt on the balance sheet that they have, uh, and the legacy that the pandemic will, will bring with it. So just in summation then, um, Money International is a investment trust um, that's diver diversified, but seeks to capitalize on businesses where we have um, high quality under leveraged companies, but who are very focused on total return investment. So over the long term, we hope to grow the capital, but on a year to year basis where possible, we hope to provide uh, real income growth. Um, it's a liquid trust because it's a big trust at 1.7 billion uh, with a yield of 4.7% today. So with that, I will close and I'll be here for questions uh, later on.